Hi, I'm here with Mark Tommy, and we are going to talk about backups. Mark, um, ever take it away. Ever, ever the exciting topic. We're talking about backups, of course, uh, and backup and recovery. So, I suppose the big thing about uh, backup, where people ask me a lot, is what is the future of backup? Right? It, it, will backup ever go away? The answer is backup will not ever go away. Um, you're, you're always going to need some level of re recovery, and to have recovery, you're going to have to take a backup of some form. So when we actually look around and we look at how backups are actually structured uh, uh, today, you end up with a, an awful lot of these silos, right? You have physical administrators taking backups, VMware administrators taking backups, other virtualization administrators taking backups, application owners, storage administrators, right? They're, they're doing this, they're doing it all the time. All right. If you think in VMware, I mean, with VDP, which you, you, you might have been uh, discussing previously, the VMware administrator able, inside their user interface, hit a button, yeah. backup happens. So much, much tighter integration there. Yeah. Tighter integration there. Um, if we look at applications, we talk about Oracle, we're talking about SQL. Um, Oracle have an interesting thing going on. Uh, not only do they talk to the CIO, but they always look to take care of their database administrators by extending the functionality in the core suite to extend their jobs. Right, right. So storage management functionality went into uh, the Oracle database. High availability, clustering, and backup with RMAN, recovery manager. So the Oracle uh, database administrator able to take backups um, as they choose, when they choose, usually before patches. They're usually doing this before patching. Um, they're not going to wait for the standard backup administrator to um, oh, run a backup job for me because I need to upgrade yes. the Oracle database. They're going to have their recovery sitting in the back just in case. Question. Well, does, it, well, does this kind of mean for like larger enterprises that have very siloed roles doing yeah. different things, does that mean that the, uh, the backup administrator role is going away? No, it means the backup administrator role, uh, the, the job there changes, right? Yeah. It changes to move towards, I put it this way, more to a more um, management and compliance aspect. What do I mean by that? If you're in a, a, an enterprise at the moment, the CIO or the CSO can come to you and say, are we backing up everything we should be backing up? You know, are yes. we keeping the information for as long as we should yes. be keeping it? And the backup administrator today can go hand in heart, I know what I'm backing up. Yes. I know what I'm keeping. Yep. I don't know what the virtualization administrator, the application owner, the storage administrator, are there snapshots in those systems yep. for five years, you know? Yep. Don't know that. Um, the so, view, yep. So you need someone with a centralized sort of overview as to what's going on for the company, especially for clients, right? Exactly, so, yep, and what yep. it comes down to is that you go off and you decide, well, am I, is it my job as a backup administrator just to push agents, just to push right. application agents? And now application agents are important. In backup applications, 75% of the total development effort goes into application agents and keeping them current. Right, right. Um, when you think about it, the amount of releases of, uh, from Microsoft, of their operating system, from their applications, uh, from the other application vendors, yeah. SAP, Oracle, all these people going on, going on. You have to keep currency. And uh, it's what I'm finding increasingly is that where um, literally day one, a new version hits, yeah. your customers are on the phone. When are you going to have support for whatever 2013, right? right? right they yep, want yep. it immediately. Yep. So with, with that, if you want to keep a level of application currency, you're looking to do it within 90 days, wow. right? You want wow. to do it within 90 days. A lot of effort goes on there. So the job becomes, do you want to be slinging agents or do you want to allow these people to use their existing tools, yep. but back up to your infrastructure, your dedicated protection infrastructure. Right. A dedicated protection infrastructure, which you make available to these end users, um, these end users can then do their backup recoveries, but you're watching them. You're seeing the amount of information that they're doing. You're looking that they're replicating this data from your yes. uh, dedicated protection infrastructure. And you can go hand on heart yep. to the CIO and CSO who become your boss, right? Yep. It isn't just an IT function. It's the CIO, the chief information officer, and the chief security officer. And you can tell them yes. with reports, with reporting and auditing and everything that needs to be done. We are backing up what we need to be backing up. We are holding on to what we need to be holding yep. on to for the amount of time we're holding on oh, that's to. That was pretty good stuff. Well, you mentioned the end user in there. Mm -hmm. um, what I'm seeing is like a, a shift to empowering the end user, well, the end sort of desktop yep. user, for example, to actually performing not their own backups, but their own restores. I yep. mean, that must reduce the amount of help desk calls and the, uh, the amount of time the end users are waiting for restores and everything. Absolutely, one of the greatest inventions, uh, the greatest paradigms, one of the newest concepts, it's not even a new concept, yep. it's just something we're capable of doing now, is laptop desktop, yep. self-service. Um, the days of, uh, I have, uh, I've just obliterated that spreadsheet 
um, can you get me uh, the previous version? I can. It is on a tape cartridge that is in a warehouse. Yes. Can you, can you wait until tomorrow, right? Yep, can yep. you wait until next week? No, and you, you look at that, everything old is new again because um, you look at technology such as Amazon, Glacier, right? They have like yep. the four to five hour service level. That pretty much everything is old is new again. But with the even with the self-service stuff, people aren't going to wait the four to five hours. No. They want to log in with their, their standard uh, network login through your Active Directory, your LDAP, whatever you're doing, put in their credentials, browse through their file system, Click the point in time, hit recover. Yep. They want that spreadsheet back. They want the PowerPoint back. They want whatever they absolutely they obliterated by accident. People these days are used to that, aren't they? The sort of uh, you know instant like, gratification. That's that's the very words I was Ab going to use. Absolute yep. instant gratification, uh, because these are you know we are the uh, we're now the um, the generation of Dropbox. We're now the generation of simplicity that file sharing that yep. goes on there the oxygen clouds of the world and yep. so on but there's still the aspect there where you want your instant recovery that instant gratification yep. Yep. for what happened don't want to be hanging around you don't want to be hang hanging around so one thing you mentioned there you touched on tape yep. i mean what are you seeing out there with customers is there a you know, you always see the thing, tape is dead. That's been going on for a few years now. Tape is not dead, right? Tape is not dead, right? It's still there. Uh, yeah, it's still there, and it, it's going to be there for a while to come. What I will say is that for operational backup and recovery, it is dead. For operational backup and recovery, this isn't a transition that's happening. For operational backup and recovery, um, the first point of restore is disk, right? Yep. And for the most part, it is deduplicated disk, right? Right? It is deduplicated disk. Um, tape moving to the much more longer archival, longer retention areas where you get no deduplication, yep. you get no compression right yep. what people don't really know and, and what they might not understand is we talk about a company like EMC um, EMC has always sold tape right yes in such a way that if there was an order to be fulfilled we can do it through a partner yes right yeah we're just not in the tape business so um, I, I, I think what you what you you look at there for operational backup and recovery your 30 60 90 days a year even getting longer yep. the first point uh, the first point there is always disk when people start saying I want it for 10, I want it for 15 years, yes, yep. that becomes much more tape and conversation. And for like, uh, you know, compliance retention, that's a different ball game altogether, isn't it? You can do compliance on disk. You can all you can do yep. compliance on disk. Yep. Um, so worm and the, the the concept of locking. I mean, EMC back in 2001 uh, offered Centera, right? Yes, EMC Centera right. yep. compliance edition worm in there, yep. right? Um, FLRC, so file level retention compliance on. VNX, yeah. F FLRC and VNX, and of course, uh, compliance and retention lock compliance edition on data domain. Right. So right. compliance right way through from end to end. People ask, what would I use where? Well, it you know, do you, are you looking for data deduplication? Are you looking for the snapshotting? You, you know, you use yeah. your data domain system with deduplication, replication, compression. If you're doing it in your primary storage, you only want a, a bit of it there, you do it in your VNX. Yeah. And if you're, you decide I want purpose-built object storage, right, yeah. you use the Centera. So why, why, why wouldn't people use deduplication these days? Are, are there use cases or reasons why people won't want to use this sort of powerful functionality, which effectively is going to cost them less for the storage, right? Initially, it was uh, kind of decided that deduplication, um, yeah, you know, it, it, this is, it's at a level, the performance isn't there. I can't have the number of concurrent connections I might require for my archive. I have all these things going on. Those limitations are vanishing and they're doing so very quickly. With every yeah. release of the data domain operating system, what we actually do is um, the uh, underlying random access, small random a access performance gets significantly better. Right. And the number of concurrent connections that you might have in an archiving use case gets significantly better. Right. So, um, where typically a data domain system, we talk about deduplicated disk, um, would have been used for backup. So you'd have a number, usually in the hundreds, of um, either clients or storage nodes writing to a data domain system. If you look at the archiving use case, you can have thousands, if not tens of thousands of individual users clicking on attachments to bring them back, yep. right? So you bring up the number of concurrent connections that you're actually looking to doing there. And that's happening, that's happening today. Yes. But we look at Centera, Centera, the Jason Voorhees of storage <laughs> platforms, <laughs> right? right? Yep. Do, if people have been saying Centera, yep. it's going away, it's doing this, it's not going anywhere. We're, we're after a decade of Centera. Yep. They, they, you know, there's a, we're in the new decade of Centera. Yes. So the Jason Voorhees of storage 
storage platforms, it takes a licking and keeps on ticking, right? right so right. It, it's well, like, that's good to know. yeah, new hardware, new software, the whole thing going on. Gotcha. Hey, well, so, you know, looking forward into the future, mm. you know, what sort of thing do you sort of speculate we could start seeing? I mean, um, you know, where's, where's backup and recovery going? Speculation? I, I, I don't know. I know nothing besides <laughs> what, uh, what, what, you know, people, well, what sort of trends what people like Chad uh, get up on stage <laughs> and usually tell you what the future is. Well, if we look at ourselves and look at what the competitors yeah. are doing, are we, are we seeing any sort of shifts or any trends there at all? There are f uh, fundamental shifts uh, there. It does come to these, this whole thing, end administrator, end user empowerment, yeah. right? Well, well, the thing that you touched on. More of that, right? right? right. More of that. Uh, there will definitely be more of that. Um, there are things we're looking at as well. What is the value of the backup agent, right? What yep. is the value there? Obviously, there's the overhead, the hassle, there's the, and the updating it, that you, you the updating that you're doing there. All, yep. all this stuff going on. What, what's going on? We're looking at that. There's uh, and there's there's pretty much. And I said it before with Amazon, everything old is new again. There's a whole bunch of tech, uh, techniques which might have been abandoned. That curve, you know. Yep. Disco is not dead. These things could come back again. <laughs> right, In our right. case, disco is dead, but uh, the, well, these things know, could maybe, come back. Maybe you maybe never come know. Back. So. Uh, hopefully not. Uh, <laughs> No one, no one should look like uh, that. Right, what right. a boring decade. But... <laughs> I'll take your word for it. Okay. How dare you? I was three. <laughs> pretty, well, Zella, pleasure as always. Thank you very much. Very informative. And um, if people out there want to sort of uh, follow you on Twitter or your blog, how can they do that? Storagezilla on Twitter and storagezilla.typepad.com because I'm too lazy to buy a URL on the net. Zilla, thank you. Thank you.